The vulture bird is an expert at eating dead bodies instead of hunting for live prey. They are very good at eating dead bodies, but not suitable for hunting live animals. Vultures not only exist in the natural animal world but also appear in China's economy. Under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party CCP, its economy has long been called the cannibalistic economy, or also known as the vulture economy. So, what exactly is the vulture economy? And why is this term used with the CCP? What consequences will those blood-stained money cause for countries that still blindly cooperate with the CCP? Let's find out in today's program. The Chinese Communist Party has created a vulture economy. Despite its economy facing a downturn, China still holds a significant position in the world economy, and almost every country has engaged in business with the CCP. But to understand the true nature of this system, the world is still too naive. On numerous occasions, China has secretly laughed at the countries they consider foolish and easy to exploit. Although on the surface, the CCP always appears friendly and invites other nations to cooperate and develop together, the reality is that they are falling into its trap. Over the past few decades, China has developed into the world's second largest economy, just behind the United States. However, few people know about the dark, hidden corners behind this glamorous economy. It is no coincidence that the world calls China's economy the cannibalistic economy. This label is actually an accusation and condemnation of China's economic practices. As an atheistic party, the CCP's economic approach doesn't care about moral values or limitations. Their economic principle is simple. As long as money comes in, they don't care where it comes from. As the flashy stage curtain slowly falls with the changing times, China can no longer hide its faltering economy filled with fake statistics, fueled by ineffective real estate projects, or sustained through excessive foreign debt, reliance on foreign investment, and technology theft. All of these are like a wake-up call for the world to understand before engaging in business with China. Abusing abundant resources and sacrificing the living environment of the people. In recent years, China has been losing a significant amount of non-renewable resources every year due to reckless exploitation for production and exports. The CCP believes that all assets belong to the government, including land, water, forests, and other natural resources. Exporting a large amount of natural resources at low prices has brought enormous profits to the country's government. According to Mr. Mani, former vice chairman at Reliance Industries Limited, although this is not a wise long-term strategy and will have negative impacts on the ecological environment, in reality, it has brought China significant income over the past few decades. It's not surprising that about 90% of the world's supply of metals, rare earth elements, such as zinc, lithium, and other materials for electronics, comes from China. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, although rare earth elements are indeed found relatively abundantly in the Earth's crust, there are very few places in the world that produce them. This is because the extraction and mining of rare earth elements cause environmental harm. According to BBC's fact-checking and monitoring group, rare earth minerals are China's trump card in the trade war with the United States. Thus, the Chinese government is willing to produce and export this commodity at the world's lowest production cost, disregarding environmental pollution. Gradually, China has become the world's exporter of over 95% of rare earth elements. They use this power to threaten the United States in the trade war, manipulating market prices, without caring about the potential threat to the lives of Chinese workers and citizens. The consequences of this process are truly terrible. In the resource-rich regions of China, water and soil are contaminated, leading to unusually high rates of disease among the population, creating cancer villages, where people, who are already impoverished, cannot relocate elsewhere. Crops and animals cannot survive, and the environment is irreversibly destroyed. Destroying the ecological environment for economic development. Like most countries aspiring to develop their economy, China's initial step was to establish heavy industries. Today, China has world-leading manufacturing companies and produces nearly half of the world's steel. However, the aftermath of this development is a severe air pollution problem in China, surpassing alarming levels. Despite the health risks to its citizens, the Chinese government is still willing to sacrifice their well-being for economic gains. The Chinese government is also unhesitant in destroying the life of rivers in East Asia. For example, when it comes to the water resources, China has choked the Mekong River, a lifeblood for millions of people in Asia, by constructing hundreds of dams. 
This alteration of the Mekong River has resulted in the destruction of its ecosystem and exacerbated droughts in the lower region. According to Fitch Solutions, the main reason for changing the course of the Mekong River is to facilitate large-scale commodity trade. Additionally, researchers at Stimson emphasized that for Beijing, water is seen as a sovereign commodity to be exploited rather than a resource to be fairly shared among downstream parties. It can be said that exploiting resources for profit is a reckless tactic of the Chinese government. The vampire economy sucks the blood from the people. Recently, China has been overtaken by India as the most populous country in the world. However, China remains in the second position with a strong and diligent workforce, driven by the fear of poverty. It still attracts foreign investors. With globalization, China has become a player in the game set up by wealthy countries like the US and the European Union to take advantage of cheap labor, resources, and industrial waste disposal. China has become the world's factory since the 1970s, opening cities along its coast and becoming the manufacturing center for most developed countries. With increasing natural exports, the Chinese government easily ships goods to Western countries, mainly the United States, and receives foreign currency. The most dangerous consequence of China becoming the invincible factory of the world is the depletion of the Earth's energy and resources. To sustain its production, China consumes half of the world's cement, nearly half of the world's steel, one-third of the world's copper, and one-third of the world's aluminum. Does the Chinese government really bring employment and benefits to their people? The answer is no, because previously this government has nationalized all the money and jobs of the people, and now they only play a simple game by allowing the Chinese people to work as employees and earn money freely, which is a basic right that the Chinese people have been deprived of by this government. According to the statistics from Conversable Economist, China has the highest national savings rate in the world, reaching a peak of 52% of GDP in 2008 and around 45.8% of GDP in 2017. In comparison, the United States has a national savings rate of 18.9% of GDP, and the global savings rate is 26.4% in the same period. It can be seen that China's savings rate is one of the highest in the world. One reason why China can invest so much year after year is based on the funding from the high savings rate. This is also the reason why China maintains a high required reserve ratio in commercial banks, at 20% of total deposits before the trade war with the US and currently around 12.5% in major commercial banks. According to economic synopses, there are four main factors contributing to the savings behavior of the Chinese people, which in turn creates a huge pool of savings for China. The first. Economic reforms in China starting from 1978 led to fluctuating incomes for the people, with many jobs paying very low wages. People developed a mentality of saving more because they felt uncertain about the future. Second. Since 1978, the Chinese government gradually shifted the burden of retirement income to households. Therefore, increasing savings became necessary for retirement and ensuring a comfortable life in old age, which further contributed to the higher personal savings rate. Third, the financial system and financial market in China are still relatively underdeveloped and have only recently begun to undergo reforms. Consequently, borrowing for housing, education, healthcare, and other major expenses is difficult, and people primarily rely on personal savings to cover these costs. Fourth, the high real estate prices compared to incomes in China have led to estimates from economic synopses that an average Chinese worker would need to save their entire annual income for about 50 years to buy a home. Such high real estate costs have driven the increase in the savings rate. Furthermore, experts from Forbes hypothesize that an important social phenomenon driving the high savings rate is the extreme family planning in China. This has led to a high gender imbalance, leading to pressure on the marriage market causing people to increase their savings to improve their competitiveness in marriage. The industry is unique. Live organ harvesting. Over the past decade, investigators have gathered evidence showing that under the direction of former Chinese President Zhang Zemin, the Chinese Communist Party has killed prisoners of conscience, mostly Falun Gong practitioners, and harvested their organs for sale on the transplant market. According to the Wall Street Journal, China has been accused of engaging in the horrifying practice of trafficking in human organs. This is difficult to prove, as the organs of the victims are processed and incinerated immediately afterward. However, more and more witnesses, including doctors, police officers, and prison guards, have come forward to testify to this crime. 
Not only the Wall Street Journal but also mainstream media channels like Forbes, Fox News, CNN, etc., have presented evidence of this well-hidden immoral business by Beijing. There is a significant amount of evidence relating to the time spent searching for suitable organs, the number of organ transplant cases, and the number of executed prisoners in the country. According to reports, patients in China, including foreigners, are promised organ transplants within a few days, and the longest waiting time for a matching organ is only three weeks. Former Canadian politician and prosecutor David Kilger, lawyer David Mattis, American journalist Ethan Gutman, and a group of researchers have confirmed this by posing as patients and visiting hospitals in China. In contrast, in most Western countries with advanced medical systems and high rates of organ donation registration, patients still have to wait for months or even years for transplants. This raises questions about the vast supply of available organs. On July 6, 2006, David Kilger and David Mattis published a report accusing the Chinese government of forcibly removing organs from innocent Falun Gong practitioners, stating that this was the most evil act on this planet. Their 2007 book, Bloody Harvest, presented a series of evidence proving the Chinese government's involvement in the live organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners. It can be said that the profit-driven organ trade of prisoners of conscience has brought a huge amount of money to the Chinese government, which has been happening for 20 years on the mainland, under the protection of this government. Jeffrey Nice of the United Kingdom, the chair of the Independent Tribunal into Forced Organ Harvesting from Prisoners of Conscience in China, made a final ruling on March 1, 2020, regarding this crime. The report revealed that this government has performed between 60,000 to 90,000 organ transplants annually, instead of the claimed 10,000 cases of organs harvested from executed prisoners, generating tens of thousands of US dollars per transplant case. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, from 2000 to 2006, the number of hospitals performing organ transplants increased from 91 to 1,000, and their numbers multiplied like bamboo shoots after a rain. According to an internal speech by then Deputy Minister of Health Huang Jifu, China carried out 34,726 organ transplants from 2000 to 2004, with liver transplants increasing 18 times and lung transplants increasing 24.5 times. The court on China issues stated that the main source of organ transplants comes from the harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners, a spiritual and physical practice based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, which was popular throughout China and the world. Additionally, Tibetans, Uyghurs, and some members of Christian minority groups also suffer the same fate. A comprehensive and transparent price list for organ transplants has been provided, with kidney transplants costing $65,000, liver transplants $130,000, and heart transplants ranging from $130,000 to $160,000. Independent.co.uk also reported that China is making around £800 million per year from this organ trade. When the whole world was struggling to fight the pandemic, there were some who quietly made a fortune from the coronavirus. The coronavirus dealt a heavy blow to the economies of all countries. However, China, where the disease first broke out, cleverly used the current terrifying outbreak to enrich itself. It exported large quantities of low-quality medical supplies to the West and tried to polish its own image as the savior of humanity, despite being the culprit of the century. Looking back from 2020 to now, the full picture of hiding, spreading, and propagating false information about a successful pandemic control to profit amid the chaos in China has been exposed. To maintain its power, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, needs to keep social stability at all costs, even if it means using an iron fist and deceit to silence the people. With the pretext of social stability, and possibly being the source of the coronavirus from a lab in China, as accused by many US and EU politicians, the Chinese government covered up the initial outbreak in Wuhan. Early signs of COVID-19 might have appeared as early as November 2019. In December 2019, authorities reprimanded eight medical doctors for spreading rumors when they tried to warn the community about the outbreak of SARS-like virus. Instead of heeding the warnings, the government allowed five million people to leave the city before the Chinese New Year, which contributed to the global spread of the disease. The government did not inform the public that the virus could be transmitted between humans until January 20, 2020 and they sealed off Wuhan four days later. To continue hiding the true situation within the country, the CCP manipulated data to downplay the scale of the outbreak and refused international experts access to China while tightly controlling information leaks on social media. Moreover, 
The unconditional support of the WHO for the Chinese government's pandemic-related information and the ambiguous attitude of the WHO towards the pandemic made most of the world underestimate the severity of the issue. All these cover-ups led other governments to underestimate the severity of the pandemic and delayed their timely response, resulting in a surge in positive cases and deaths in many countries, especially in China's neighboring allies like Iran and Italy. In the global panic and shortage of medical supplies, China strived to export medical materials, not out of humanitarian purposes, but to portray itself as the world's savior. When the outbreak became uncontrollable, and the supply chain in China was disrupted, the scarcity of pandemic prevention medical supplies became a matter of life and death for healthcare workers, doctors, citizens, and every government facing an outbreak. At this time, regardless of the lives of its own people, Beijing hurriedly resumed work and production. The reported disease figures suddenly decreased to fit the government's narrative, and some even disappeared. Many factories had to reluctantly reopen as ordered by the government, despite having to work with the fear of cross infections due to a shortage of medical supplies to protect their employees. Furthermore, the CCP even harbored ambitions to use this opportunity to surpass the U.S. economy. The New York Times reported that in March 2020, China produced 116 million masks daily, 12 times more than before the outbreak. At that time, Western media were too naive to believe the fake data propagated by Chinese media, which were even exported to numerous international media outlets sympathetic to China in the US, UK, and EU. They not only praised China's authoritarian specialization model of containing the pandemic as an ideal example for the world to learn from, rather than the measures taken by democratic countries. Up until now, all have been left astonished. Through the media, in 2020, China emerged as a new global leader in distributing medical equipment to countries affected by COVID-19. Orders flooded into Beijing, along with pleas for support. According to Fox News, in March 2020, Spain purchased $46 million worth of medical supplies from China, including 950 ventilators, 5.5 million testing kits, 11 million gloves, and over half a billion protective face masks. On March 18, 2020, 150,000 rapid COVID-19 test kits were shipped from China to the Czech Republic, worth about 14.05 million crowns. The Netherlands also bought 1.3 million masks from China. And there were countless massive deals like these in the early days of the pandemic. While Western countries were willing to spend huge sums to protect their citizens, the bitter cost they had to pay was poor quality medical supplies that worsened the situation and contributed to the spread of the virus. On March 29, 2020, the Philippine Department of Health stated that they could not use some COVID-19 test kits donated by China due to their inaccuracy. Spain faced a similar situation when they found that China's advertised 80% accuracy for rapid test kits was only achieving 30% in reality. Prior to that, the Czech Republic also reported that about 80% of the COVID-19 test kits from China produced incorrect results. On March 28, 2020, the Dutch Ministry of Health also recalled 600,000 masks out of the 1.3 million produced in China because they did not meet safety standards. According to AFP, the masks were found to have faulty air filters and did not properly cover the critical areas on the face. Clearly, China's export of low-quality medical supplies to other countries not only cost them financially but also made pandemic containment more difficult with inaccurate testing and inadequate protective equipment for healthcare workers and the general public. The profit-seeking at the expense of human lives brings to mind the image of a vulture, smelling death and waiting. The world seems to be awakening to an unscrupulous partner, the vulture economy, making money off the bodies and lives of people worldwide. As foreign affairs expert Gordon Chong once said to Fox News, China created the poison and is now selling the antidote to the world. However, this antidote, with a steep price has become the most disgraceful and credibility-destroying moment in China's business history. The price of China's vulture economy. In the past two years, China's economy has entered an irreparable recession. Many big companies have left China, and some countries have awakened and stopped doing business with it. Tech giants and companies in China have been cutting jobs. Businesses can't afford to hire employees anymore. The situation is very serious. Unemployment is widespread, and China is on the brink of social instability. China is also suffering the consequences of destroying its own ecological environment, leading to more natural disasters and disease outbreaks. In recent years, disasters like earthquakes, prolonged heatwaves, and severe floods have been happening more frequently and intensely. This year, China experienced a rare and record-breaking heatwave in June, with temperatures reaching 74.1 degrees in Hubei province, nearly 60 degrees in Beijing 
and over 50 degrees in Tianjin. From late July until now, China is facing a historic flood disaster, affecting hundreds of thousands of people, with serious damage to homes, roads, and infrastructure. Nowadays, more and more Chinese people are waking up after decades of suppression and deception by the Chinese Communist Party. According to Tuidong.org, the website of the Global Service Center for Quitting the Chinese Communist Party, as of August 2023, over 416 million people worldwide have publicly renounced their membership in the Chinese Communist Party's organizations. This is a nightmare for the Chinese Communist Party, as the collapse is coming from within. The doomsday of the Chinese Communist Party is getting closer and closer. Beijing's Chinese dream is built not only on the sweat and blood of the Chinese people but also on the taxes and lives of people all over the world. Due to the greed for economic benefits, the blind desire of governments in some countries still hasn't awakened from this inhumane and dangerous Chinese dream. The existence of the vulture economy in this world is irrational, and to let it continue is even more irrational. We all need to understand its nature and wake up to it. We value your thoughts and opinions on today's topic, so don't forget to leave a comment in the section below. Share your insights and join the discussion. If you want to stay updated with more captivating topics from China Truths, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more intriguing content.